Elgin 4M models. 4MH Broombeer. 4MF Eagle. 4MW Road Wizard. Elevator and conveyor belt systems. My name is Kerry Alcott. The 4M platform is shared between a few models and the elevator flight system is the same on both. The elevator design was modified from the H series broom bearer to make the removal of the elevator structure easier. The upper shaft bearings are recessed into the sides of the structure to gain clearance for removal between the water tanks. The upper shaft is changed from the chain drive to a direct drive hydraulic motor, reducing some wear items. There is an optional conveyor belt design from the Eagle model available. The conveyor belt can handle larger and more debris at one time than a squeegee type elevator. The conveyor belt is a one piece rubber belt with cleats and is wrapped around two roller shafts. Debris is carried on top of the belt on its way to the hopper. The squeegee type elevator system uses two shafts with sprockets and chains with rubber flights across the chains. The debris is squeegeed up the floor plate of the elevator structure on its way to the hopper. Both systems require cleaning, lubrication, and adjustment. Heavy sweeping is better done with a conveyor belt. The elevator system can jam if large debris gets between the leading edge of the floor pan and a flight. The elevator system is best suited for normal street sweeping, but can handle larger loads at a slower pace. This picture shows debris wrapped around the upper shaft, and it grew so large that it did damage to the upper shaft and to the elevator structure covers. This can be avoided with operator awareness and correcting the issue. The conveyor belt does not have the same problem, but if the lower roller is not cleaned out often, damage can occur there as well. Both systems have shaft bearings that require daily lubrication. Both systems need to be adjusted and cleaned. We will show conveyor belt adjustment and maintenance later in the video. Proper bearing lubrication. All the bearings are a daily lubrication. Bearings have seals to keep the grease in and the dirt and water out. Only put two pumps of grease in a bearing with a hand grease gun only. The reason for only two pumps is so we don't overpressure the seals and pop them out of place. Overfilling a bearing is not good because the grease will hold the heat in the bearing and take the temper out of the steel and cause the bearing to fail prematurely. The sweeper subframe is mounted to the truck chassis with heavy riveted support plates. The sweeper subframe is made of heavy gauge metal on a cross tube weldment. Mounted to the rear of the chassis is a roller assembly that will support the elevator. On each side there are channels that rollers and a crossbar follows that support the elevator. The rollers follow the track to bring the elevator to the hopper. Then lowers by sliding down this track. The bottom roller that supports the bottom of the elevator is bolted to the chassis and has wear pads that the elevator rests on. Elevator structure removal. The elevator assembly can be removed with a minimum amount of disassembly. The direction of the elevator when removing is down and back out of the main broom area. This process is easier with the hopper removed. There are four bolts and a door cylinder clevis pin to remove the hopper box. With a piece of plywood, the top of the scissor lift becomes a working platform. A hydraulic cylinder and linkage raises and lowers the elevator height for sweeping and transport. Stop pins are used to set the clearance of the elevator over the sweeping surface. 
Example, elevator stop pins may be positioned for a maximum of 3 inch surface clearance when sweeping leaves or litter, or positioned to a minimum of an inch and 5 eighths clearance for sand and gravel. Holding the elevator height switch in the raised position will increase the ground clearance while it is held. Releasing the switch will return the clearance set by the pins. Stop. Safety first. Make sure the hopper is empty, then tilt the hopper completely. Danger. Falling hopper can cause severe injury or death. Safety supports must be in position before anyone goes under the hopper. Install the hopper safety support. Caution. Use caution when standing or climbing under the truck frame. Do not step on the side from the gutter broom disc. Adjusting the flight chains. The time to make an adjustment is when the chains have too much sag in the upper side of the chain or when making contact with the cross support bar inside the elevator structure. There is on each side of the elevator a cylinder that when filled with grease will push up on the upper shaft bearing mount. There is a button grease adapter that comes with the sweeper, just add a zerk fitting. Slip the grease adapter onto the bottom of the cylinder and using a hand grease gun, pump a few shots of grease into the cylinder then move to the other side and repeat. Apply grease to both sides until the desired clearance is obtained. Flight chain adjustment you want to achieve is a clearance of 3 to 4 inches at the closest point of the sag. Do not over tighten. There should be a sag in the upper side of the chain. The elevator shaft bearings are adjustable. To set the flight clearance between the sprocket and the floor pan, if not set correctly, the flight can be forced under the sprocket. Proper clearance for the lower and upper shaft bearings are the same. Loosening the bearing mounting nuts and moving the bearing up will increase the clearance of the flight from the floor pan. The flight needs to be directly between the shaft and the floor pan for this adjustment. You could place a piece of metal or a flat blade screwdriver tip under the rubber flight to hold the clearance as you tighten the mounting nuts of both bearings. Conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is one piece that goes around two rollers. The conveyor assembly. Consists of a frame. The upper roller. It has a spiral strap of metal to help keep the belt track to center. The upper roller take-up bearings are used to adjust the belt. The lower roller. Lower roller bearings. The lower roller is offset one inch lower on the left side to help tracking of the upper adjustment. All the bearings are a daily lubrication. There is a belt scraper to keep debris from sticking to the roller or to the back side of the belt. Built into the frame is the lower roller washout system. Attached to this is a ball valve in the hydrant fill for the water tanks. This washout is a very important daily cleaning. Adjusting the conveyor belt. Take up bearing on the right side of the machine. The take-up bearings on the upper roller are used to adjust the belt. By moving the bearing up, we'll move the belt away from that bearing. Left side take-up bearing. Adjusting nut. The first adjustment we're looking for is the belt tension. The belt needs to be tight enough to not slip on the upper roller, but not too tight that the spiral strap on the upper roller doesn't cut into the inside of the belt. The belt should sag in the middle a small amount. But we want to see the ground between the belt and the floor pan. You should have 2 to 3 inches of clearance between the cleat and the floor pan. We want the belt to run within a half an inch to the left of the frame without making contact all the way down the frame. If hard contact is made at the lower edge of the frame, 
it will tear the belt. If we can't get to that half inch at the top without contacting at the bottom, the lower roller needs to be offset one inch lower on the left side. Adjustment Instructions If the cleat of the belt is touching the belly pan, adjust both bearings up evenly. If the belt is running to one side, it will run to the looser side. Adjust up the side it's running to. It will take about 150 revolutions for the belt to find a new resting place. Let the belt run at 1500 RPMs for 15 minutes between adjustments. This belt can be repaired. This is not reason enough to replace the belt. The belt should last half the life of the machine, if not longer. Keeping the belt cleaned out and in adjustment will make it last. A belt can be repaired by cutting out the bad section and resplicing. If the belt is too short, a single or a double flight section can be spliced back in. Changing the conveyor belt. To change the conveyor belt, remove the main broom. Bring the splice on the belt to the bottom. Relieve the tension in the belt as directed under conveyor belt tension adjustment. Remove the belt splice. Pull the belt out from underneath the structure. Install the new belt through the top opening of the structure. Install the new belt splice. Assemble belt ends, splice plates, and insert all joint screws. Leave nuts loose. Tighten joint bolts from the center outward as shown in picture. Note. If screws are tightened from one side of the belt to the other, the belt will not track on center. Adjust the belt using the procedure given under Conveyor Belt Tension Adjustment. Thank you for watching. The next video is on an elevator rebuild.